In this tutorial in Adobe Premiere Elements 2020, we'd like to give you some introductory tips on using a tool called split toning. This is an effect that you can apply onto your video clips to change the mood by using color. What I have on the screen is a video clip. It's a nice forest with a walkway. We'll place a few frames of it so you can get a sense of it. We see the sun coming through the trees toward the camera and it's a really nice shot. But we'd like to change the mood a bit by using some color. How can we do that? Well, I'm going to click on the effect area on the right, my FX. And then instead of show all, I'm going to click on the down arrow and we'll click the fourth one from the top. It's called color correction. Here I have three different tools that I can use. We're going to focus in this tutorial on the split tone control. We'll take that effect and drag it down and drop it on top of our picture. Now you notice instantly it changed quite a bit. I'm going to click on the picture of the eye and turn it off. We see the normal view and then I'll change it again and if you look carefully now we see the, the difference. We're going to look at how we get there in a moment. But under the split tone effect, you have three different categories. You have one called highlights, one called shadows, and then you have a control on a slider called balance. What's that all about? Well, the highlights basically are your lighter shades or colors. If it was a gray scale, it would be your lighter grays. Highlights do not include white. There's no color in white. This won't affect it. Shadows, if it were grayscale, would be your darker grays or your darker colors in your image. And you can affect that with a different kind of color than you do with your highlights. And balance, obviously, will control the proportion of one as opposed to the other. Now, to get into either control, you simply click on the triangle. I'll do that for both. And you can see that each one allows you a color. We'll show you two ways to select your color. And it has a saturation value. So the shadows, the darker, also has a color defined either by moving across this slider and a saturation value. And the balance is the balance between the highlight and between the shadow. So let's look and see what we've done here so far. I took a highlight in the yellow area. Again, I'm going to turn off the eye so you don't see. I turn it back on. You see it is definitely a yellower picture. I can click that square and go to my color palette and pick any color I want. I'm going to pick even a more intense yellow and click on OK. Now you notice what happened. The value of the hue changed because the number here, 67, currently is the same as where I'm at on the color scale for my highlights, my lighter colors. If I seem want to go back a little bit, we see that they're a little less prominent. I'm into another range. I'm down to 50. If I move over here, you notice now we change into a teal color with this value. Over here, we're in dark blue. And then we're way over into our reds and pinks, maroons over there. So you can either use the slider or you can drag across the number to move slower. Or you can use the color box to pick the color, decide which one you want. We'll go back into our more normal yellows and click on OK. Now the other value you can change for each of these is saturation. I've got this color that's locked in, but now we're going to dial down on the saturation. And you see it's less pronounced. The general rule of thumb when you're split toning is don't go overboard because it starts to look a little bit bizarre. But you can change the, the tone and texture quite a bit with a little bit of color on the highlights. Now let's look at the shadows right now. Let's see what we're using for a shadow. I'll click on the box. We're using kind of a reddish color. Let's go into the blue area and try a bluer shadow and click on OK. Now we've got a little bit more of an ominous look because we still have our yellows, but our darker colors are really dark. 
Again, I can take the saturation and dial that back to get a little more normal, but it's still, the trees are still a very edgy looking compared to what they were before. Let's try this with a green color instead on the shadows. We'll click over here. And now it looks very lush. It's too intense because it's overwhelming the, the highlights. So we'll dial back a little bit more. But now, now the green stands out. It's lush. Now the third control you have, besides the highlights with both the hue, which sets the base color, and the saturation on each scale, is you have a balance between the two. We drag the balance, in this case, to the left. We see more and more is green. If we move it to the right, we see our yellows are winning out. And so you can use all of these tools, the saturation value, once you have your color, and the sliders on balance to get just the look you're looking for. If I want to take my base color and move it slightly, I'll go a little bit more to the left here. That looks pretty good. I like that. Let's say increase that just a little bit. Now when you have people in the scene you must make sure that you have them in some of the frames that you're testing to make sure you don't change their skin color to something that is really grotesque. And I'm going to turn the eye off again. And there it is without the effect. Click it back on and there it is with the effect. You notice how you change the mood. Again, you won't, don't want to overdo this because you can turn something normal into something really abnormal. You don't want your viewer to believe that you've done anything at all to the color, but you've actually changed the mood and the feel of the scene by adjusting it with this split tone effect in Premiere Elements 2020.